we have. All right. So let's begin the second talk of this morning session. Wen Wen Lee from Hobart and William Smith Colleges. And we'll be talking about persistent homology of configuration spaces of metric graphs. Yes, I mean, let people see the video. Okay, uh, thank you for the uh, introduction and giving me a chance to speak here. Uh, yeah, so today I'm going to talk about persistent homology of these computer spaces of metrographs. And this is our joint work uh, with Murat Ozadian. Yeah, so let's start from the big picture of my talk. Uh, so consider we have n points. Uh, so here we just treat like points as uh, robots uh, in a metric space, uh, X delta. So, um, you know, with some proximity uh, restraints, uh, such as the minimal distance allowed between uh, the S robot and the J's robot. Um, so the question is, how does this configuration space, so in particular its homology group, um, changes when the minimal distance or the space varies? And um, so in this talk, we will only focus on the case that n uh, equals two. In other words, we will only have two uh, robots uh, on the metric graph. Uh, and X will be the geometric realization of a finite tree, meaning uh, so basically so we don't have like sets, um, so we don't have like loops um, like in the graph. So um, yeah, so let's begin. So um, let gamma be a finite connected graph and uh, X to be the generalization of this graph. And uh, given a vector L, um, so we call X a metrograph. Uh, if we so if we um, so if we assign a, a positive real number to each edge uh, of the graph. So I mean, so this basically like, like represent the length uh, of the edge. And um, so in X, uh, so it has uh, a metric. Um, so it's called the the path metric delta. So um, that means for every uh, pair of points x and y in x, so delta x y will be the length of the shortest path from uh, x to y. And we use uh, x sub l to denote this metric space um, x delta. And so we call the nth computer space of x uh, with restraint parameter r and the actual factor to be the collection of n tuples uh, lives in this product space, uh, X sub L, uh, where the distance, I mean, delta of Xi and Xj is greater than or equals to Rij for every possible i and j. And when, uh, so when the edge length vector L is fixed, uh, we just use X uh, nR instead of uh, this uh, huge notation for the sake of uh, simplicity. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, so basically, so we allow gamma to have multiple uh, edges, but if gamma has loops, then we add uh, one vertex to subdivide this loop into two parallel edges. Um, then we can just assume that the space has a regular CW complex uh, structure. And um, so the maximum cells uh, of uh, this X and R uh, are uh, obtained by intersecting the space with the product space um, uh, x to the n. And so, yeah, so, here, so here's the point. So if x and r and x and s, they have the same combinatorial type, then they have to be uh, homomorphic to each other. And so this um, restricted configuration space actually has some co uh, connections uh, with the, uh, so with the nth configuration space. When R is small, uh, X and R is homotopic equivalent to the nth configuration space of X. Okay, so that's a lot of definition. So let's do uh, a quick uh, e example here. Oh no, um, yeah. Okay, so okay, so be so before I like you know be so before I run into uh, the, the 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 toy example. So let's actually like like tell uh so let's actually uh, like run over uh, the cell structure. Of the space, so um, yeah. So one nice thing about this um, like metro graph is we can actually find the cell structure uh, of the configuration space using an um, so so using inequality systems. So we so we have two scenarios. So the first scenario is um, those two robots actually on the same edge, 
and we can use um, this in, in info system to um, to to uh, to describe the situation, right? So first four um, in quality just indicate that those two robots actually on this edge, uh, and so the last three uh, in quality is just describe that they are you know on the, so on the same edge, but um, so this purple um, like robot is actually uh, has like like longer distance um, to this um, to the to the tail of the arrow than this uh, green robots. So um yeah, so we can actually draw um the so the cell that represent um by this um yeah, by this uh inequality system. And this shaded area is the solution for this uh, uh inequality system. Um uh, yeah, so this is the first scenario. And the second scenario is those two robots are uh, on different uh, edges, and we can do the same thing and draw um the cell. Um, and you know, so this shaded area is uh, so it's a cell that represents um, um, this scenario. Okay, so now let's do an example. Um, so let uh, y sub l to be the metric graph uh, of the shape uh, y uh, with the following um, uh, like following uh, uh, following metric. So two of these edges has length one. In other words, uh, the length of edge e two is one. And the length uh, and the length of edge e three is also one, but we, but, but um, I mean, but we vary the length of edge e one. Uh, and here we put two two uh, two two robots on this rail x and y. Uh, so first of all, so let's fix um the length of e one to be one and vary um the parameter r to see what will happen. So when r equals to two, uh, so the space actually only consists of six points. And let's decrease r. So when r equals to 1.7, so the space consists of uh, six triangles. And let's further decrease r, so the triangles get larger. And when r equals to one, now, um, so this space actually becomes two paths connected. Uh, so therefore, we kill five of six path components uh, on the left. Okay. So if we further decrease R, um, we will have like, smaller holes, but we will also have uh, six fins right here, so six red triangles. And when we further decrease R, so the holes get smaller and triangles get larger. Um, and we can do it to, you know, arbitrary small uh, R. So yeah, so so now so we have the bar, yes, we have the bar, bar code for the zeros per season homology of this uh, configuration space. So this happens when the edge length of E1 is one. But like what will happen if we change the edge length of um, E1? So yeah, so how about we just try two, okay? So now um, when R equals to three, so now the, so this configuration space uh, is consists of four points instead of, uh, so instead of six points. And now if we further decrease R, uh, well, R equals 2.5, so space consists of uh, four uh, triangles. And when R equals to two, now, uh, so those triangles like merge into one path component and uh, similar for, the, like, for those two triangles. So uh, so we killed um, two, uh, like 12 or four um, like path components at R equals to two. And also we have two points born at uh, R equals to two. So therefore we also add uh, two pass component at r equals to two. And now if we further decrease r, uh, so the space will look like this when r equals to 1.3. And so when r is one, uh, now so the space becomes the pass connected. So therefore we kill uh, three of the four pa um, pass component at r equals to one. And now uh, if we further decrease R, uh, we will have smaller holes and we will have like um, six um, fins um, on the graph. And when R equals to 0.2, like for example, we have smaller holes and bigger, um, like, uh, like bigger fins in the figure. And so, yeah, so this is the bar, bar, bar code for the zeros persistent homology of the second configuration space of the Y graph when the adjuvant vector um, so when so when the S length of E1 is two. Okay. So um yeah, so yeah, so given a metro graph uh X, so let R be the restraint parameter and uh L to be the adjuvant vector. So we define the S persistent homology to be 
the composition of the following functors. Um, so, you know, so the first arrow basically like give us, so on object level, so we have, uh, on, um, so we have an nth configuration space with a given parameter. Uh, and then if we apply it as homology group uh, with the field coefficient, then we'll get the persistent module. Okay. And um, yeah, so because we're dealing uh, with uh, multi-parameter, so therefore um, it's, it's so, so it's impossible to classify all, um, all so all the indecomposable Dirac salmon. Uh, so in particular, there's a no hope to classify the finally generated uh, FX, uh, FX, so FXY modules because you know so this um, so FXY is not PID. Um, yeah. So um, so like one uh, so one so one special thing about this metro graph uh, is so it's it, so it's this. So at certain uh, R values, uh, so the combinatorial type of this configuration space um, change. So and and you know so we call such R value is critical. Um, so um, yeah. So in other words, um, so for each fixed uh, L, there are only finite number of such R such that this combinatorial type of uh, of this of this configuration space change. This is a type of so this should be X L to the N. Um yeah, so let's go back to the the um uh, the toy example we did. So uh on the right hand side, so so this is the parameter space. So this is a space that this parameter R and L leaves. And all the lines um uh, I uh so I draw here is the collection of all critical positions um of this configuration space, meaning that so you know so for so for each uh, r uh, on this um, line, so those r values are critical. But like within the this the, like so within this like gray shaded area, so we call those area chamber. Um, so so like so in each chamber, so the, so the combinatorial type won't change. So therefore, uh, so if we have like two uh, so two 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 spaces like living in the same chamber, then those, then, then, then they are actually like ho ho homeomorphic to each other, and we can just calculate the homotopy type chamber by chamber, and this is what we got. So um yeah, so for example um so for this blue chamber we got here, so homotopy type uh is uh one so it's, so it's S one, and then we can just apply uh the zeros per uh, so we can just apply H0 and H1 uh, to each chamber to get uh, the persistent module. Um, and this is what we got. And from the picture uh, on the right, so you, uh, so I mean, so because pH1 of this configuration space is an integral module. So therefore pH1 of this configuration space actually is indecomposable. Um, but on the left, so pH0 of this, um, uh, so pH zero of this configuration space. Um, so I mean, so this is so this is a little bit like complicated, and we want to figure out the it's indecomposable Dirac Simon. And so in order to do that, um, so we um, so we construct the following. Um, so we you know so we give uh, each uh, chamber uh, a vertex, um, and we. Uh, and we assign an arrow between each vertex to represent there's a wall like crossing, um, like in a graph. And yeah, and I mean, so it, so um, so it turns out so the, you know so so the so the so diagram we draw actually is uh so it's a is a it, so it's a diagram for this uh, pose po, po, p, um, and um yeah, and actually we have a functor. From this parameter space to this uh, pose IP. Um, yeah, so back to this toy, toy example here. So this just indicate that you know, so we assign each chamber uh, a vertex, and we assign an arrow to indicate that there's a wall, like a crossing um, between the chamber. And um, you know, so, so so now we have a new uh, representation on this uh, pose IP. Um, by just you know putting um, um a vector space um you know that we got like from each chamber like for you, you know so for the first one because we have f uh, everywhere so in this chamber so we just put that f uh, right here 
and similarly for the others. And now, so so if we can figure out um, the um, the so so if we can figure out the indecomposable Dirac salmon for the representation on the right, then we can translate it back uh, to the incomposables uh, for original persistent audio. And uh, and this works um, in general because we have this factorization up to net, uh, natural isomorphism. So, um, so the hor hor horizontal arrow is the S persistence uh, homology module. Uh, and we have this factor, uh, like factorization, like through this um, post IP that's, that we constructed from the hyperplane uh, arrangement. Okay, so yeah, I'm, so I think I'm on time, so let's go. Um, yeah, so this is the incomposable Dirac summon we found for uh, the zeros persistent homology of uh, the second configuration space of the Y graph with two parameters. Uh, and from the, uh, yeah, so from the, uh, so from this figure we are here. So as you can see, we have a two uh, for those two chambers. So this indicate that for so for each point uh, in this chamber, so we um so we assign uh an F two um to every point um here. So therefore, um you know so this first indecomposable Dirac salmon is not an integral module. So therefore, uh the pH zero of this configuration space uh is not in the uh it, so it's not integral decomposable. And yeah, so this is the information that like 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 regarding the arrow um, that like um like you know like when we like across the wall like what happens um to the arrows. Yeah, and we do similar thing for like for the star graph because um so the you know, so the y graph is just a star graph when uh when this k equal to three, um. And so the key observation is, um, so the star graph when k is squared than or equals to four, um, so you know, so the second configuration space uh, on the star graph and second configuration uh, second configuration space of the y graph, so they have the same critical hyperpoints, and we can just again so calculate the homotopy type uh, chamber by chamber and then like apply the um, the homology functor uh, to each chamber to get a persistent module. And this is what we got. Um, so uh, we so we calculate the zeros persistence module for um, this configuration space and first persistence homology uh, for I mean like for this space as well. Uh, and so the figure on the right. So if we take the um, the 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 discretization, uh, so this is just an A two quiver. So therefore, pH one of this configuration space is again uh, interval decomposable. Um, but pH zero of this configuration space, so it looks very complicated, and we won't figure out the um, the indecomposable Dirac salmon uh, of this persistent module. Um, yeah, so before that, so here's a remark. Um, so we actually got a similar result for um, those, you know, pH zero and pH one with integral co 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 coefficient. So here, um, so if we use a field co coefficient, then the number um, like in the chamber that you know, so they just like represent that the the uh, the dimension of the vector space um, that we assign for each uh, point, but um, but I mean so if we use the integral co coefficient, then those numbers will just like represent the rank uh, of the uh, uh, so the rank of the uh, uh, abelian group uh, that we you know so that uh, that we assign for each uh, point in the chamber. So uh, yeah, so then we figure out um, the incomposable Dirac summon for P0 of the second configuration second configuration space of the star graph with two parameters. So again, so um so we have this um uh, so we have this incomposable Dirac summon with two and two for those two chambers. So therefore the P0 of this configuration space uh is again not um not uh so it's not inter it's not interval decomposable. But for the other, two, uh, like so, for the other uh, Dirac salmon, they're actually uh, like interval modules. Okay, so I think I still have five minutes, so let's go to the next thing we calculated. Um, yeah, so we also find the um, the uh, the the unicomposable Dirac salmon for the pH one uh, of this configuration space. So this one is pretty. Uh, I mean, so this one is very, like very nice. Um, so just like two in a row, like over, uh, like overlap, um, on top of yeah, 
you know, so this one is on the top of this one, uh, like this. Um, yeah, so we, um, so we also do the calculation for H graphs. So uh, yeah, so let uh, M and N uh, be um, like natural numbers are uh, which are greater than or equal to three. So we define a uh, generalized H graph. Um, I mean, so this is H sub M N uh, is, is, so it's this graph. So we have uh, a bridge here. So we call this H E1. Um, and so, um, yes, we use this HMN sub L to denote the, uh, the, the geometric realization of this, um, um, a, you know, generalized H graph, uh, where um, the actual vector is given at, uh, by the following. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so, so basically, so, um, so in this arc, so at least, so we fix the edge length for uh, those, you know, like E2 to EM and E2 prime to EN prime to be one. And we vary the edge length of this bridge E1. Okay. So um, then, yeah, so we calculate the zeroth persistent homology of the H graph. So H graph is uh, the case that when M equals to N equals to three. Um, so we calculate the zeroth persistent homology um, of this uh, of the second coherent space of the H graph with two parameters R, R, R and L. So L is the length of the edge of the bridge, a and um, yeah. So this is the zeroth persistent homology module, and um, and this is the pH one of this coherent space. And from the figure on the right, so this is again. So this is actually um, how should I say? It? Yeah. So this is an interval. So in other words, so if you take the um, the discretization, then you will have an A3 quiver, which is again uh, like interval decomposable. Um, so that's fine. But so P0 is again looks very complicated, and we will figure out it's indecomposable Dirac Simon. And this is what we got. So surprisingly, pH0 of this confidence space is interval decomposable because every sum uh, is just an, an interval. Right, so every uh, so every like chamber has multiplicity one. Um, yeah, so that's very cool. And we did a similar thing for the generalized H graph. So um, yeah, so this is the pH zero uh, of the of the second coherent space of the generalized H graph. Um, and we also did the calculation for pH one. So again, so because uh, I mean, so if you take the discretization, you will again get an A three quiver. So therefore the pH one of this coherent space is again uh, in, uh, interval decomposable. And uh, we find uh, the, the, um, the, the interval, so we find the, direct, the indecomposable Dirac summon for pH zero of this coherent space as well. So um, yeah, so, it, so it's again, so it's interval decomposable and we find the multiplicity for each uh, Dirac summon. Yeah, I think this is a good place to start. To 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 start. So yes, uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions? Maybe I can How did you compute the indecomposables by hand or something else? Oh yeah. Oh um. Okay. So let me go back. Um. So this is how we calculate. So this is the uh, the the zeroth persistence module like corresponding to 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 the second coherent space of the y shaped graph. So we actually calculate the indecomposable Dirac Simon for this uh representation, and then we translate it back uh to the or you know like translate it back to the pH zero uh, of 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 the y graph basically. So we use this factorization right here. So we calculate this, um, you know, so the indecomposable Dirac Simon for this new representation right here, and then we translate it back um, to the, or, you know, to, so 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 to the to the to the, or, to the or, or, original persistent value. Um, that's what we did. How did you compute the indecomposable stuff? M. Sorry, sorry. Uh, can you say that again? I couldn't hear you. How did you compute the indecomposables from for M? 
for n. Oh yes. Um. Yeah. So um. For so for that, so we just find the um the compatible um like generators. You know. So we found like generators for, like for maybe like for f two, and we found the generator for f four and f two, and then you know. So it somehow so we match those like generators. Okay. Yeah. There, there are two questions in the chat. The first one is, uh, what is the role that configuration space plays in your theory? Or why do you study the configuration space of a metric graph? Oh, uh, so that's a, I mean, so both questions are great questions. Um, so, I mean, so this factorization, like for example, um, so I don't think, so it works um, like in general. So it only works when, um, like when we have like configuration space, because um, so if we don't have that, um, so I don't think, uh, we can get this post IP after taking the uh, the um the 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 discretization basically. So here, so we do the discretization here. Um, so if we don't have uh, a metro graph, then um then um then basically, so I don't know like whether or not we'll get a post IP right here. Um, so if we don't have this, then, um, then, then, I mean, so I have like no, no way to construct this module here. And then the next question is, so the metric graph is a discrete metric space. Thus, uh, the configuration space of the metric graph, can it be computed? Because, uh, conf computing configuration space is very difficult in most times. Yes. Yes. That is correct. Yes. Other questions, yes. Uh, so I think you explained this, but uh, I missed it. So in the, the figures you draw, there's the y-axis, which is this L, and that's how the distances change. Yes. Then, so uh, no, no. I, I, OK, so L represents the edge length of the special edge. Uh, uh, and R is the minimal distance between those two points. All right. So, uh, one special edge uh, in each case. Yeah, yeah, that is correct. Yes. Uh, okay, and then R is a sort of threshold of when you connect things. Yeah, because um, uh, I mean, so for the so for the star graph, so this L actually is um, so it's so it's the edge length for like for a leaf, but for the H graph, um, so the L is the um, so it's the length of the bridge. So that's the difference between those two graphs. Um, yeah. If there are no other questions, let's thank Wen Wen again. Thank you.